So in this video, I am going to be going through all the, the four standard cases basically that I talked about earlier. Now, before we learn about the standard cases, let me just tell you the objective of learning these standard cases. And that is so that we don't always have to do it manually by you know counting the points of the object or how far the object is from the line of reflection. It's just, it's just so that we can use the standard rule and reflect the object directly. Okay, it'll save us a lot of time. It'll save us a lot of effort. And uh, if you, let's see what I'm talking about by learning them one by one. Okay, so we're gonna be taking this object over here, ABC. Okay, I've written down the, its, its coordinates over here, as you can see. And we're gonna be reflecting this along the X axis, which is Y equals to zero. Okay, so one thing that I wanna do is that I wanna highlight the X axis. Okay, so you can see here that I have highlighted the X axis. Okay, so whenever you're reflecting an object, the idea is that the distance of the object f uh, from the line of reflection is the same as its distance from uh, the same as the distance of the image from the line of reflection. So here's what we're going to be doing. So let's look at A and let's see how far it is from the line of reflection. Okay. So if I count the number of boxes, I can see that it's one, two, three, four, five. So that means it's five units above the line of reflection. So that means the image is also going to be five units, but in the opposite direction. Okay. It's going to be five units below the line of reflection. So one, two, three, four, and five. So there, there you go. This is where the image turns out to be. So the image I'll mark in green, just so that it's easy for us to distinguish. Now let's talk about B. So it may get slightly confusing for B as it is just on the same arrow as the previous one, but you can see it's two points above the, or two units above the line of reflection. So that means once we reflect it, it's gonna go two units below the line of reflection. So this is where B is. And at the same time, what I would like us to do is I'd like us to write down the reflected coordinates so that we can sort of uh, come up with a pattern and you will notice that there is a pattern. So A turned out to be, so X coordinate remained the same, Y coordinate turned out to be minus five. So let's write that down, seven comma minus five. Let's talk about B. So B is right over here and you can see that X is still seven, Y however is minus two. So let's write that seven comma minus two. Okay, and then let's talk about C. So for that, I'll have to first reflect it. So two units above, Reflecting it means taking it two units below. So two comma minus two. This is where C is at now. So this is C prime. Let's just write them one by one, A prime, B prime. Okay, so now I'm gonna join them with the help of straight lines, of course. And in the meantime, I want you to look at the reflected coordinates and tell me if you come up with a pattern. So yeah, there you go. Hopefully you would have identified a pattern and the pattern is, that while the sign of the X coordinate remains the same, the sign of the Y coordinate turns negative. And it's not just that it's gonna turn negative, it's basically gonna change, uh, the sign of the Y coordinate will change, okay? So if it's negative, it's gonna turn positive. So that means if I wanna generalize the whole thing, let's say I have a point with coordinates X comma Y, and if I want to reflect it along the X axis or Y equals to zero, all I have to do is change the sign of the Y coordinate and that's it, we're done. So we don't have to count the distance over and over again and then reflect it. We can just change the sign of the Y coordinate and that's it, we're done. And that is the benefit of knowing the standard rule. Okay, so now we're gonna do the exact same thing, but this time we're gonna do with the Y axis, okay? So I am highlighting the Y axis for you and let's count the distance one by one. So let's start from point A, although there's no, uh, I mean, you don't always have to do that. It's not absolutely necessary. So A is seven units towards the right. That means if I reflect it, it's gonna go seven units towards the left. So this is where it ends up. And the coordinates are minus seven comma five. Let's talk about B. So B is also seven units towards the right. Okay, and reflecting it means that it's gonna be seven units towards the left, okay. There you go. Let's write down the coordinates. So the coordinates are minus seven comma two. There you go. And then for part C, C is two units towards the right. So that means if I reflect it, it's gonna go two units towards the left. So this is where C is at. So writing down the coordinates of C, C is going to be minus two comma two. Okay, now let's join them with the help of straight lines. And while I'm doing that again, I want you guys to identify a pattern for me. So there you go, and let's be good students. Let's label the coordinates one by one, A prime. Okay, uh, one thing that I should mention over here is just, just to distinguish between the object and the image, we put a small apostrophe, and uh, this uh, we call it A prime, okay? There you go, okay. 
now if I if I study the pattern you can see that while the x coordinate sorry while the y coordinate remains the same the sign of the x coordinate changes so that means if you have a point p x comma y after you reflect it it's going to be minus x comma y and there you go that's your answer you know so this is the shorter way of doing it we don't have to do what i just did but what i just did was for your understanding only okay now we have to reflect this along the line y equals 2x okay now drawing the line y equals 2x is actually very simple okay that means whatever x is y is going to be the same so it's going to be an upward sloping line but sometimes it does happen that students tend to forget what the line looks like okay so your safest bet is to make a table just like you would for any other line and you assume values of x and you find out the corresponding values of y and when you do that in the equation y equals to minus x if you take x to be equal to minus one you'll notice that's that y is also equal to minus one if you take x equals to zero you'll notice that y is also equal to zero and if you take x equals to one you'll notice that y is also equal to one so that means when you do come up with a line this is what the line is going to look like so i'm just going to mark the points over here here's zero zero here's minus one minus one and here's one one okay uh your points don't have to be that thick just by the way okay i'm doing it just so that i can put some special emphasis on it ideally you should be putting a cross so make a point passing through these three lines uh, these three points sorry make a line sorry passing through these three points and make sure to extend it okay so there you go this is the line y equals 2x and now we're going to be doing the exact same thing we're going to be counting the distance but this time we're going to be looking at the perpendicular distance not just this time we were looking at the perpendicular distance before also but this time we're just going to be looking at the distance diagonally so if this is the line of reflection this is the distance this is how we're going to calculate the distance of the object and the image so i'll tell you what i mean so this is one unit away from the line of reflection so if i reflect it this is where it's going to end up point b is basically two and a half units away from the line of reflection so if i reflect it it's going to go two and a half units in the opposite direction so half one and two right so this is where we end up okay so it's not my best work but you know we'll do the job point c is interestingly is that a word yeah interestingly is on the line of reflection so that means if i do try and reflect it it's not going to go anywhere at all so point c there's a special name for point c okay and i want you to think of that name while i'm making this triangle okay and i'll give you a hint it starts with the letter i so here's a prime here's b prime and here is c prime so let's join and whenever you do join your triangle just sort of you know look at it from a distance and see if it actually does look like a reflection you know it's easy to identify a reflection compared to any other transformation so this does look like a reflection that means we've done a good job okay so a turned into what from 7 comma 5 it turned into 5 comma 7 okay and b from 7 comma 2 turned into 2 comma 7 and c from 2 comma 2 didn't turn into anything at all all right it just remained 2 comma 2 which means this point is referred to as invariant point okay and what exactly is an invariant point so we're going to be dealing with these over and over again later on in the in the chapter but invariant point is basically a point point that remains unchanged okay so i've run out of space there so i'll write it over here so in short it's the point that remains unchanged after whatever transformation is applied uh, to it okay and in reflection, in reflection, all points, all points lying on the line of reflection. So that means if you have a point that's on the line of reflection, if you have to reflect it, you know, it's just not going to go anywhere at all or invariant. Okay. So if we have to come up with the general rule, if you have a point with coordinates x comma y, let's study the pattern here. So we can clearly see that, yes, the uh, it, it has changed, but it has changed in a specific pattern. And the x coordinate turned y, the y coordinate turned x. So if you have a point p, x comma y, and if you're asked to reflect it, all you have to do is you don't have to go through the pain of making the line, counting the distance. You can just swap the x and the y coordinate, and that's it. You're done. Okay. So we're just left with the final standard case and that is y equals to minus x so this again if you have to make a line over here so if you take y x is minus one y becomes positive one if you take x is zero y remains zero and if you have x is one y becomes minus one okay 
So again, we're going to be making the straight line over here. So we have y equals to minus x. So let's mark the points here. So minus 1 comma 1 is here. 0 comma 0 is here. 1 comma minus 1 is right over here. So again, we're not just going to join these three points. We're going to join them and we're going to extend them also. Okay. So let's count the distance one by one. So this is going to be slightly uh, more challenging than the previous one because you have to make sure that you get it exactly right. So this right here is, let's see how many, how many uh, boxes is this? So one, two, three, and I'd like you guys to count with me as we are reflecting it. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that means we're gonna take it six units to the other side. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. There you go. This is where we are. And this is a prime, so I'll switch to the color green to distinguish. Okay, then let's talk about B. So B is one, two, three, four, four and a half. So four and a half to the other side. So one, half, one, two, three, and four. So let's mark this. So here's B prime and then let's do C. So C is two units from the line of reflection. Reflecting it means taking it two units to the other side. So there you go, this is C prime. Now let's join all of them with the help of straight lines and see what do we get. So there you go, oops, I'm gonna, I would prefer to use the color green. There you go, there you go. And yeah, that's it, okay. Now let's write down the coordinates, see what they look like and let's see if we can come up with a pattern here. So A prime becomes, as you can see, minus five, minus seven. So minus five, minus seven. B prime, as you can see, becomes minus two, minus seven. So let's write that. Minus two, minus seven. C prime becomes minus two and minus two. Okay, so tell me if you see a pattern here. And the pattern is quite uh, obvious. And the pattern is that this time we're not just swapping the X and Y coordinates, the signs are also changing. So that means if you're given a point with coordinates x comma y and if you're asked to reflect it along the line y equals to minus x, all you gotta do is just write, rewrite them with their signs changed, okay? So from negative to positive or vice versa and the coordinates swapped. And that's it, you have then successfully reflected a point with uh, along the line y equals to minus x and there was no invariant point over here. Okay, so yeah, that's all for this video. So in this video, we have done the four standard cases. Oh, Things are not always gonna be so standard. Sometimes we will have to, although very rare, but sometimes we will have to reflect an object along a line that uh, is none of the four that we have done here. Okay, so we're gonna see how we're gonna do that. And you kind of already know how to do that. Okay, we, we have learned the concept, but you know, we'll look at it formally. So yeah, that's it for this video. And uh, I hope you guys have learned this concept. If you have, do let me know in the comment section and do for don't forget to share this video with your friends, classmates, or whoever you think can possibly benefit from it. And do subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.